All right, let's keep going with Blackbird. But I just restarted Ninja Trader for the day I started fresh, and Blackbird is nowhere to be found. Brought up the same chart in the same workspace, but it is not there. That's actually a safeguard in Ninja Trader. So in Ninja Trader, strategies like Blackbird and any other custom strategy can take trades for you. That's their whole point. Right? But that can be dangerous if you allow some third party strategy to just start taking trades, you know, as soon as you start Ninja Trader. And so they decided to make it so that your strategies get disabled between sessions. So when you start Ninja Trader, all of your strategies will be disabled. So to re enable Blackbird when we open Ninja Trader back up or return to a workspace that was closed, uh, we'll go to Ninja Trader's main control center window here go to the strategies tab and there's our blackbird sitting on this CL chart, but it's disabled. So we'll check the enabled box to enable it and we're good to go. And again, you need to be connected to a data feed for that to work. And because when I closed Ninja or I saved the workspace, it remembers the blackbird file that I was working in and it included the Bloodhound file, so everything is all loaded up for us. Okay, so let's go a little deeper. We're gonna add a second order set to our rules and touch on the order trailing actions. Now we could just create another order set from scratch, but I have an idea that involves adding a runner to this. So in many cases, a runner is basically a similar order set, but without a profit target. And we're gonna have the stop loss follow the price up as we go. So let's go ahead and duplicate our first order set. So we're going to go copy from A, that's order set A. Now we have two duplicate order sets with one contract each. So you could say this is a two contract system split between two order sets. Okay. Now to make it a runner, let's go ahead and remove our profit target because the goal of this order set is going to rely on the stop loss to trail the price up, hopefully allowing us to get an even better exit than if we had relied on a simple 20 tick profit target. Let's go into this second stop loss and come up with some ideas. So we'll go to the trailing actions tab. Now, traditionally, most trade managers have the concept of a fixed trail or a standard trail, where as the price goes up, the stop loss will follow, in this case, 10 ticks behind, basically reducing the trade's risk as the order becomes more profitable. Now, that's fine. It's a little boring, but it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's popular for a reason. But in Blackbird, we have full control over how, when, why, and where our orders will move. So the way this works is when something happens, do something to my order, and then do we repeat that action? There's a lot of things you can do in here. For example, the trigger, when something happens, there's a lot of things you can listen for. You can say after a certain amount of time has passed or a certain number of bars have passed. Uh, you can say once we've reached a certain profit or loss, um, then start trailing or move my stop loss to a certain level. Um, you can even later on, this gets a little too advanced for these basic beginner videos, but you could even create a dedicated bloodhound signal rule set whose entire job is to manipulate your stop loss. You could imagine that that gets quite complicated, but at the same time allows you to get extremely creative and fine tune the rules uh, for your trailing actions. But for this example, let's go with the concept that I've seen a number of times where, where someone says, you know what, let's have the stop loss stay at 10 ticks below until we hit the profit target. Right? So we have this order set over here with 20 tick profit target, and we're saying as soon as price hits that profit target and fulfills this first order set, from there forward, let's start trailing the stop loss 10 ticks behind the price. Okay, So to do that, um, we know where this first profit target is going to be, so we can grab onto that by detecting the profit. So we say once we've reached a profit of ticks, because we know this is 20 ticks, at least 20. So once we've reached at least 20 ticks in profit, let's move our stop loss. And there are other things you can do in here. You can even flatten your position or whatever, but most of the time you're moving your stop loss to price minus 10 ticks, saying uh, move this stop loss 10 ticks behind the price. And uh, in order to keep it 
trailing up, we're going to repeat that action. So we're going to say repeat indefinitely every one bar. And there we go. So it's going to stay at 10 ticks. And then once we hit our first profit target, do a fixed trail uh, on the stop loss 10 ticks behind the price. Hopefully price will continue to go up, allowing our stop loss to give us that much more of a profit once we do hit it eventually. So that's just a basic example of the trailing action rules. Now let's talk about testing this. Remember, we talked about the dynamic planner for testing where our orders will start, right? So we can see if we plan long, we can see that we have two stop losses. That's both of these order sets, stop loss A, stop loss B. So we have two stop losses and one profit target. And the idea is that when price comes and hits this guy, one stop loss will remain and then it will follow up, probably snap up to about there and then follow up from there. Okay. But how do we actually test and, and see the behavior of our order trailing? Now we could just enter our trade manually and, and hope that price moves in a way that allows us to test that properly. Um, but you know what, let's go ahead and connect to the playback connection. Playback is a great way um, to see things in action. So I'm going to disconnect from our main live data feed that I'm on. Before you do anything like this, by the way, refreshing the chart, disconnecting from data feed, anything that would basically disable Blackbird, you do not want to be in a trade. Make sure you're flat so we can see uh, there's no PL being listed here. It says we're flat. Uh, there's no indication up here that we are in a trade. Um, and if I want to be absolutely confident, I can see in the positions tab, there's no positions open. That's important because Ninja Trader does not handle very well, um, you know, disabling a strategy while it's controlling a trade. We're flat. Let's go ahead and disable Blackbird, disconnect from our data feed, and let's open up the playback connection. Now, I am not an expert on the playback connection, so you will want to read their documentation to, to learn more. But the whole idea here is we're going to download the data for, in this case, the CL April 24 contract. We're going to download all of that day's data so that we can run back in time and play it forward, uh, basically behaving like live data so we can see things in action and actually test to see how it would have behaved. So let's go do that. CL uh, April 2024. So let's go find futures. CL April 2024. So let's download the last few days. So I'm just going to hit download on today, or I guess yesterday was 310. So we'll download 310. We'll go back 39. This is a weekend, so it downloaded nice and quick. We're just going to go through this process download each day. We're going to do it for the last week. I think that would be good. Um, when you're doing a proper test where you're trying to see the results of the test, you probably want to go back longer than one week. This is just to see how this behaves. Okay, good enough. I went back to last week's Monday. All right, so now that I've downloaded all those days, I can hit continue and that opens bring up my playback slider here that opens the playback feed. Um, it went back to 3.2 because I did have some downloaded data from there, but I will definitely have some missing data if I go back to there because I didn't just download all the way back to 3.2. So let's dive back to the, the last day that I had downloaded the 3.4, which was last Monday. And if I start playing this forward, the chart will update and return us to that time at 10 p.m. on 3.4. And I can play it forward at a faster speed just to see that the data come in live. There we go. We can see the data, the uh, price bar is moving. Again, we're on a three minute bar. And this is overnight, so actually we can, let's go a little faster. And actually, you know what? Instead of going faster, let's right click and go to. And let's go to 3.4 at, actually let's go earlier in the day. That was a Monday, so let's go um, 10 a.m. Ah, it still went to 10 p.m. Okay, I think I would have to download the day before in order to, to do that morning. So let's go to Tuesday in the morning and play it forward. See it in action, make sure it's actually going. All right, you can see you can play that quite fast. If you have a slower computer, then once you're running Blackbird or, or any other advanced indicators, you might want, not want to go at a thousand times speed because you can miss some signals. But most computers can handle uh, 50 or 100. Just play around with it and see how, how it works for you. Okay, so let's slow that down. Now that we're at a time that we want to start on, let's go ahead and pause our work and re-enable Blackbird. So we'll go back to the Strategies tab, 
check enabled. Ah, but I can't check enabled because there is one setting we need to adjust. It's currently not a valid strategy because when we're in the playback connection, um, the account is actually a unique SIM account just for playback. Remember before we were on the SIM 101 account, but when you're on playback, it is the playback 101 account. I'll be honest, I don't know all the nuances of the differences between the two. My goal is to show you how to use our products, but I would recommend as you're learning this stuff, learn how NinjaTrader treats these different accounts um, on your own, because these are NinjaTrader features, not ours, okay? Now I will mention, I'm going to remain on the default calculate on bar close. But if you have a strategy that relies on uh, getting into trades or making changes, making automated trade changes like moving stop losses and such based on information that comes on a on a tick by tick basis, basically as the price changes, you're deciding whether to get in or get out or move a stop loss and so on, then you would want to set this calculate to on price change. And the playback connection allows you to test that. We're going to talk more about back testing and testing in general uh, later, but I'm going to leave this on the default on bar close. It uses less resources on the computer and uh, behaves more like the default behavior, but at least you know you can change that. So we're going to hit OK. Now that we've set it to playback 101, we can enable it. All right, so we got Blackbird on here. Now, I would recommend if you're going to ever slide the slider on the playback connection, Ninja Trader uh, is a little quirky with that. I would recommend simply disabling Blackbird and then slide it, let it get there, and then re enable Blackbird. Now, you can do it with Blackbird uh, turned on, not in a trade though, don't be in a trade, <laughs> um, even, a play, even a simulated trade. Um, just little things about the way Ninja Trader handles that, it's, it's good to know. So be flat, and I would recommend disabling Blackbird, then move the strat or the uh, playback, then enable Blackbird. It just tends to, to run a little more smoothly if you do it that way. Okay, so now we're ready to test this out and see how it behaves. Now you might have noticed the time changed. Um, I couldn't find a good example, and so I just went and found one, <laughs> and now we're back. So let's go ahead and start playing this forward. I'm gonna crank this speed down a little bit and hit go long. I don't know where any signals are, so we'll just go ahead and enter manually. And we've got our stop loss and profit target. Okay, so um, I set this up right before a time that I know price is going to start going up so we can test this out. Let's go ahead and play it forward. And what we're expecting is price will hit the profit target and then the second stop loss, the remaining stop loss, will snap up to a 10 tick trail and follow up from there. Let's see how that works out. And we'll play it forward a little faster here. And I'll hit the F up here to rescale things, to auto scale things. Okay. Okay, so we hit our profit target, and I'm going to slow it down. You'll notice the stop loss jumped up to 10 ticks behind the price, and as we play it forward, it will continue to follow up every bar. We have it set to decide that at the end of every bar, at the close of every bar. There we go. One bar closed, stop loss moved up. Okay, another bar closed, but you'll notice the stop loss did not move up this time. It's because the bar closed below where it was before. Now, by default, the stop loss is not going to widen. Most people do not expand their stop loss away from price. And so if it is instructed to go further away from price than it already was, then it's just going to stay right there, right? That's the whole idea behind a trailing stop loss is that it's going to trail up until it can't anymore and then price comes down and hits it, right? So even though a bar closed, the stop loss stayed where it was because it, it did not have the opportunity to, to follow up 10 ticks away from price, okay? So there we go. Let's play it forward and see we will eventually hit it because that's the only option. The only way out of this trade is to hit our stop loss. Now we gotta go pretty fast in time just because, there we go, just because it's after hours, but we eventually hit our stop loss. Now you will see, during the trade, if you were paying attention, you might have noticed that there was this uh, tracker over here that showed the number of ticks in profit, and as if we're in a trade, let's go ahead and enter a trade, we can see the number of ticks in profit or loss. Click it again, that gives you the dollar amount. So nice way to track it, and then if I flatten my trade, we can see the total PL 
uh, for this session. So $250. And uh, by the way, this is one way we can test our system once we're ready to start testing it. We can go right click on the chart, go strategy performance, there's our Blackbird strategy. Now we are running in playback and so we actually took real time trades according to this tracker. Historical is totally different. We'll talk about back testing with historical in a later video, but we actually made two real time trades so we can go in there. Okay. Now this will show a $250 total net profit, 310 gross profit, but we lost 60 on that second trade that I was messing around on. This strategy performance is a Ninja Trader feature. Ninja Trader is the one that is calculating this. So to learn more about this, they do have documentation on this, but this is a good way to see uh, roughly how your system would have performed in the past. Now, of course, past performance is not indicative of future results and all of that important disclaimer stuff that you can find at, at the bottom of our website and upon request, of course. We are not trade coaches. We will never give you trading advice. Um, this is just a way to evaluate uh, the quality of your trade system. But the only way to really know how it'll perform is to run it live. <laughs> so, and we are not ready to do that yet. You do have other other screens here that are more useful if you took more trades. Okay, so that's just a very quick rundown of adding a second order set, touching on the trailing actions, creating a simple fixed trail upon a trigger, and then getting into playback and testing it out.